relationship where you can say that your father is yours. And not only that, he also gave us the term Abba, Abba Father. And anytime you use the term Abba, it's a more personal relationship. It's like calling your father daddy. So when you call your father or your mom mommy, it's a personal relationship. It means you have a personal connection and a touch with them. Anybody can be a father, but it takes someone special to be a daddy. Amen. Anybody can be a mother, but it takes someone special to be a mommy. Yeah. So that personal, intimate relationship that you have with a person, you give them a more intimate title. So God wants you to give them an intimate title, have an intimate, personal relationship with them. And practice saying Abba. Let's practice it now. Say Abba. Abba. Say Abba. Abba. Abba, Father, come now. Daddy, I need you to come now. I need you to come in this situation right now. I'm messing it up. I need my daddy right now. Yeah. Put your hands up in the air like a baby put their hands up in the air. Daddy, please pick me up. Please pick me up out of this situation right now. Daddy, I need you to come. That personal connection with him, that personal touch, and he will come see about you because you have a personal relationship with him. And any time you're seeking the kingdom, it's because you know what you're seeking when you know what it is. And now that you have a personal relationship with God, you know how to find him. And when you have a personal relationship with someone, you know their likes and their dislikes, and you know their character. You know their favorite color. You know what they like to eat. You know how they, their style is. Because yes. you have a personal relationship. And when you have a personal relationship with God, you know his character. His character is love. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, faith. So every time you come in contact with God's character, you have met God there. And yes. that's why you know God is there. That's why it's very important to seek love through God and not find love in all the wrong places. Because finding yes. love in the wrong places won't help you out. It'll actually make you feel <laughs> worse than you ever did. And when love isn't in it, God isn't in it. Now, I'm not That's talking good. about that love with motive. Some people know how to fake love. They know how to pretend like they love you and they're right. in your best interest. But all they want is what you have. They want what you can give to them. But as soon as you stop giving to them, then they love change and they go and they change partners. How many know what I'm talking about? They love you with motives. That's not the love I'm talking about. I'm talking about the unconditional love that when you mess up, they're still there. Yeah. Right. I'm talking about that love that when you don't feel lovable or you don't feel loving back, they still love you back anyway. I'm talking about that kind of love that if you don't call them ever, but they always still calling you. Hallelujah. That love because they love you. They have that personal relationship with you. That's the kind of love that God offers us. He wants us to find love in him. And you have to understand the personal relationship, how it deals with family. Because family is very important. Uh -huh. That's why the enemy tries to attack family the most. Because he knows there's a blood connection and there's a union, a connected a thing that you can bring together. And you all have family traits. How many have been to a family reunion? Amen, amen. Don't go to mine. Please, I'm warning y'all now. I, my husband has not been to one of mine, and I'm doing that on purpose. <laughs> because there's some family traits that, you know, if he see, he might just get aware of, what did I really marry? <laughs> I'm just saying. Somebody say, I'm just saying. I'm just anyway, saying. When you go to a family reunion, you can see some characteristics. You can see, you can see some traits. You yes. Can, That's where she got that from, or that's where he got that from, because it's down in your generation. Yes. She smells like him, or she smells or looks like, because it's in your generation, and it has become a part of you. And when the enemy sees a union in a family, and they're so connected, he tries to bring division and discord in it and tear it apart. Right. It starts with the head. He starts, he wants to break away the husband and the wife. And then he goes to the children. He tries to break them away. But I don't care what you do, you will always be a part of the family tree. Amen. No matter how separated you are or what divorce you get, you're still tied some way to that family tree, especially if children are involved. I don't care if you don't like your cousin, she's still your cousin. 
I don't care if you don't like your auntie, that's still your auntie. Amen? It's Amen. It's a part of the tree. And I said this example on this morning how when you put a puzzle together, the shapes are very unique. The shapes aren't round or, or really flat, but they are very unique so that it can connect together tightly and it will make it difficult to just tear apart because it's connected by its uniqueness. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to be connected uniquely. So it is dangerous to try to pretend to be someone else. It is also dangerous for you to try to make somebody be something they're not. You cannot make me be something I'm not. Right, that's right. Why I try to be me the best way I can because that's dangerous to do. Anytime you get into a relationship and you say you can change that person, you've already failed. Yeah. Somebody say you've already failed. You've already you failed. Change a person. That is a God thing. Yes, it is. That is a God thing and God alone. All you can do is pray for him and say, Lord, you do what I cannot do. Yeah. And Lord, you fix this because I don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm dealing with. Ha. Then if you bring them to your auntie or your auntie or your grandma and let them figure them out, ha, they'll help you a whole lot better. Amen? Amen. Then you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sometimes you need some reinforcement. Right. Sometimes you need a little bit of help. But my daddy was alive. He knew how to pick them, baby. Oh, he knew. He would look and say, uh-uh, Nisi, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Didn't I teach you better than that? Can't you see that? He broke, disgusted. He ain't gonna do nothing. He ain't gonna keep a job. And based on what he said, because I knew he could see further than what I could see, I trusted his judgment. You have got to trust God's judgment with the person you're with. Knowing that he will fix them and he will fix it for you. And that's how you keep a relationship together. If you keep changing partners all the time, it's hard to build a solid foundation. If you keep changing and hopping from one place to the next or one relationship to the next, it's hard to build a foundation on wisdom because you keep making the same mistake. And a person who keeps making the same mistake hasn't learned anything yet. And that's the mistake, not learning from it. That's, that's good. the mistake. That's good. That's Somebody good. Said, that's the mistake. That's the not mistake. Learning from what you're going through is the mistake. We all get into trouble. We all have ups and down times, but it's how you get back up is what matters. It's yes. what, what you did with your past and what you know in your future, what not to do because your past have taught you what not to do. Now that's how you recover from a mistake. But if you keep on repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again, now that's Tom Poolery. Yeah. Right. Tom Poolery. <laughs> Y'all better give me a high five on that. I'm trying to figure out who he was. He had the way that he had to tell me. I said, who is Tom Poolery? I thought it was a real person, but that's a foolishness. That's a foolishness to keep repeating the same mistake over and over again. Sometimes I want to slap somebody upside the head and say, what's wrong with you? Get yourself together. Didn't you go through that last year and you doing it again? Didn't you go through that? Help! What? You doing it again? I just want to pop them upside the head and say, what's wrong with you? Get yourself together. Yes. Bring your mind back here. for too long. I can't stay on one level too long. No. I'm easily bored. I got a little bit of ADHD going on. I got some attention span stuff going on. I can't sit still for too long. If I'm on one level too long, I got to do something different. Yeah. I got to do something different because different motivates me. It lets me know that something is moving. Yeah. It lets me know that the water isn't stagnant. It lets me know that my faith is working for me because I learned how to use faith. Yeah. That's what else I want to talk about. As we begin to seek God through a relationship, and we seek Him with who we know as a personal relationship with Him, and now that we have that connection and know His character, we have also got to understand the importance of how He walks and lives with us, and how He gives us faith from faith to faith to faith. In levels, faith comes in levels. You need a level 10 faith for a level 10 thing. You can't use yes. level 1 faith for a level 10 thing. If you want a big house, you can't use a faith of handling an apartment for the house because the maintenance is different. Whatever is up there, you need to use. If you want yes. a college degree, you can't take elementary faith to college. No, you can't do that. You have 
have got to learn how to stretch your faith because the maintenance is bigger. Stuff is different up there. Stuff that you haven't encountered before is there. Yes. You learn how to stretch your faith. And that's where the kingdom principles come in. If you stretch your faith and you use the kingdom, then the kingdom begins to work for you. And as the kingdom works for you, you will find out that the struggle will get out of the fight and it will become more easy because God's strength is in you. Yes. And God's strength is in you. He teaches you the laws of his spirit. And because we don't know the laws of God's spirituality, we don't understand how to get kingdom stuff. And let me help you. We know the laws of the land. We know uh -huh. if you run the red light, what well, you might get a ticket. Right. We know that if you commit a crime, you might go to jail. But what is God's spiritual law? Come Do on. you understand what his spiritual law is? And we understand the consequences in breaking a law. The same in God. If you break his spiritual law, there is consequences. Well, so right. one of his spiritual laws is obedience. Somebody say obedience. Obedience. Obedience is a spiritual law that we have to obey. And once you obey and do the law of God, there are blessings connected to you being obedient. There are also, the, 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 in the nature of God, there are also, when he gives his spirit to you, that as you begin to counteract with God, and he sees that you're looking, and you're knowing that you're in his character, he will teach you his laws of nature, and his laws of nature will teach you how to eat, and it will tell you what not to eat, because health is attached to his laws of nature. Yes! If you read the book of Leviticus in the 11th chapter, it will tell you what to eat and what not to eat. If you want to be healthy, eat your way healthy. It is a reason why God has that in the Bible. You have to eat your way healthy. Somebody say, eat your way healthy. Eat your way healthy. That is a law. That is a spiritual law. Yes. It's also the spiritual law of wealth, the spiritual law of harvest, which means you have to tithe. Uh -huh. You have to tithe. Somebody say, tithe. Tithe. It's a spiritual law of God. If you obey that law, you're going to get the tithing blessing. But if you don't obey that yes. law, you're going to get the consequences of breaking the law. So once we understand his spiritual laws, we understand his character, then you can get kingdom principles and have the kingdom working over your life. Yes. So the kingdom works in your life. You don't have to do it the world's way. You don't have to get the house the way the world gets it. You don't right. have to get the way favor. Come on up here. Right. You don't have to get the car the way the world get it. If you don't have credit, ask favor to get it for you. Whatever you need from God by using the kingdom principles, he will add it to you. But you have to seek the kingdom first. Don't seek the stuff and then seek the kingdom, you got it backwards. You have got to seek the kingdom first. Somebody say, seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. And in seeking kingdom, you know it's there because peace will reign with you. You know it's yes. there. The kingdom will get over your household and, and yes. what's out of order will get into order. And you know, you know, you know when the kingdom is with you because the people that used to argue or cuss around you, they'll stop cussing when you yes. show up. Yes. They'll change your language when you show up. And I said this at 9 o'clock, that I'm beginning to really look at my circle and pay very close attention to it because if trash carriers are connected to me, I can't deal with that because I'm not a gossiper. And if you bring trash to me, you're a trash carrier. And I'm looking for a kingdom carrier. Carriers. I'm looking for someone who can give unto me, who can give some love to me, some joy to me, some yes. peace to me. If all you got is gossip, and someone did that to me. They said, Denise, did you know what happened? I said, what? It's a girl I heard that and they've been they start telling me. Then I asked, I said, well, why did you tell me that? I said, why did you tell me that information? Well, I just thought you should know because I had heard, you know, I just heard. I said, well, why did you feel the need for me to know that? And That's during good. the conversation, they looked and it got quiet for two minutes. See? If you brought that information to me to make you appear bigger or better than them, you are already gone. You are already wrong. Because if you gotta down somebody in order for me to have a relationship with you, we have a problem with our relationship. Because obviously you don't know me because that's not my language. We're always talking about how to lift someone up. I need to yes. write a friend a book. I written write the vision and make it plain. And guess what? I can't even make the people read it. I can't even make them get success. You know why? Because they will not read. And I don't understand that. How we as a culture, we have so much in front of us and the resources we do have, we will not use it. And that's a kingdom principle. Those are kingdom laws that will help you, you be help successful. It. But your mind has got to be able to expand and stretch yes. big in order for you to receive big. Yes. If you're still at little, you'll never see big. I have a problem with a person who don't want to be a CEO. I have a problem with a person who yes. don't want to be a business owner. I have a problem with a person who won't little. I have a problem with a person who don't want to own their 
own home. I have a problem with someone who don't want, come on, up in here, who don't want love and a magnitude or, or big things and greatness. I have a problem with those who stay with little and stay on the same level because my thinking is big. It has broadened and God wants our big minds to think big because he's a big God. Yes, he is. Think big, big will happen. And I'm preaching already. I am really hot and I'm trying the best I can. And my legs hurt right now and I'm cramping up. And y'all better start praying for me right now. And help me get this message out. Because preach this today. I don't care how hard it is. As the fluids come out of my body through my sweat, they get filled right back up with the Holy Ghost. And I need y'all to push up in here. I said, I'm for real. I need y'all to push up in here. As I feel my flesh feel like it's getting ready to faint. I need y'all to push and say, go yeah. ahead, prophet. Go ahead, prophet. I need this word, prophet. Say, get it, prophet. Now I need the Lord to work some stuff yes. for me. Now I need the kingdom to come. I need you to preach right now. Say, preach, prophet. Preach. Preach. Say, preach, prophet. Well, I'm feeling better already. Put that fan on top. Put it right up here. Call it. Preach. Call it. Oh, help me, help me, help me. Preach. Put that fan right up there. Get this first as you can and turn it this way. Because we better get this word out. Because the kingdom will set you free. The kingdom will help you out. The kingdom is going to make your kids behave. The kingdom is going to make that man act right. The kingdom is going to get your relationship fixed. I said the kingdom. Somebody shout the kingdom. The kingdom. Somebody shout the kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom of God. All these other things will be added to you. I don't look for a big house. I already expect this coming. I don't look for a new car. I expect that it's coming. Because I seek the kingdom. I'm supposed to have big.
international. You need the key to go international. To stop thinking little and start thinking big. Because once you start giving on an international level, God start giving back to you on an international level. And you'll see what you have and wonder how did you get it. And you can say, nobody but God. Nobody but God.
faith is one. Faith <laughs> is one. And you bring the kingdom over your household. You start speaking peace. Don't faith add faith. to the problem, but be the solution to the problem. Sometimes it's so easy for us to fit in instead of stand out. Don't look. Don't fit in. That's don't right. Stand, stand out. out. You want to be the different one. You want to be the one that people notice. If hell comes in, you be the peacemaker. You be the one that people call to cause peace. You be the one that people seek for the kingdom because you are a carrier. You have God's principles working in you. And once you have God's principles working in you, the doors open because now God can use you to bring to them what you're carrying. And if those are people around you who are carrying gossip, no wonder your spirit is tainted. No wonder you can't see who you Same. are. No wonder you can't get a clear picture of what your purpose is. Because there's busy talking about other people's purposes so you can't find your own purpose because they're talking about what everybody else is doing and then I'm learning that people will often get behind someone who knows their purpose and try to curse them because they don't know Stop their this. purpose and they're mad because the person who do know their purpose know their purpose and that's some tomfoolery that's good oh, that's a word that's a word that is foolishness that's foolishness you know your purpose. When you know your purpose, you begin to work it, and it yes. fulfills you. And there's nothing like Woo. working a job you love. Yes. There's nothing like doing something you absolutely love to do. Because it won't become a chore to you anymore. You right. work hours and hours and hours and hours at it, and you won't even count the hours because you love what you do. I love doing kingdom work. Yes. I love studying and preaching. I love doing dining ministry. I do it from the time I get up to the time I lay down. I'm easy be putting in 90 hours a week, but I don't count it because I'm doing something I love. I'm working my purpose, and when you work, yes, purpose, guess yes. what happens? Destiny starts working for you. Yes, when you work your purpose, you begin to feel fulfilled. Yes. And everybody in here, we have a purpose, and I'm going to help you with something. We are all purpose to worship God. Yes. We are worshipers. We're supposed to worship God. That's why the church is so important because we are here to worship Him. We're not here to talk about each other. We're not. We're not here to see who's going with who. We're not here to make little clicks and this priest please like this one, this piece don't like that one, this piece don't like this one, and you group to your own little circle and you start talking about this circle. That's not why we're here. We're here to worship. Yes. And the reason we're here to worship is some of you can't even worship at home because you have too much stuff around you. You can't worship at your job, you might get fired. But here we can worship God. And I said this on this morning, and I want to do this as a demonstration because this is what the enemy does. He tries to irritate you. I need mean, want somebody to come up here and just begin to walk with me. I need one person to get up and just start walking with me. And I will show you what the devil does. And this is what he does. Come on up here. As you begin to walk, he walk behind you. And that thing that's irritating you, he'll say, you know she ain't no good, right? You know she don't like you, right? You know she talking about you, right? You know you ain't all that, right? You know she don't, uh-uh. You know she talking about what? Let me tell you what she said. You know you ain't gonna get that job. And then as soon as she go into worship, now just act like you're going into worship. The devil does this. place he cannot enter is into your worship because he will not bow to the feet of Jesus. So every time you go and bow and worship, you make him back up. So whatever that thing is that's stressing you out, you put worship on it. You lay out in worship. I guarantee you, you got misbehaving kids gonna lay out on their bed. Yes! You got a misbehaving child that won't do right in school, go lay out over his schoolwork and go lay out over his book bag and go into worship. Yes! So you got something you can't handle if you can't handle your finances, take that checkbook and go into worship and say, Lord, I need to put worship on this. And every time you worship, hallelujah, every time you worship, it makes the devil back up. He will never interfere with your worship because your worship is all about you and God. It ain't about what they did to you. It's about your relationship with yeah. God. And you worship him with spirit and in truth. And God is looking for worshipers. He roams the earth looking for a worshiper. And if you worship your way out of this, hallelujah, I guarantee you stuff is going to change. Yes. See, somebody say, worship your way out of this. Worship your way out of this. Worship your way out of this. Worship your child out of jail. Come on. Worship his yes. sentence short right yes. now in the name of Jesus. I said, worship his sentence short yes. right now. You can do it. Can you do it, Yes, yes he will. Yes. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it.
And I guarantee you, my brothers and sisters, as you begin to seek it and know it and live it, it becomes easy. And people say it's hard to trust God. It's hard to trust the world. Yes. You're right about it. I don't understand that statement either. It's harder to trust the world than it is to trust God. Like, seriously? Yeah. I mean, like, seriously? The world has rules and, you know, they have all this stuff and it's ordered. I was telling Alicia, I don't have time for a 12-step program. <laughs> right. That takes too long. Sure do. I need the kingdom to help me with some stuff. 12 steps. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I got to do all this. And then it's not a 100%. It's a possibility. You mean I got to do all these steps based on a possibility of what can happen? Oh, that's too much. I that's too much. That's too much. That's too much. <laughs> that's too much. That is. And that's why I want you to get to the place of kingdom thinking. Yes. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seeking God's righteousness is this. It is seeking the things that God says is okay. Not what the world says is okay. But what God says is okay. It's knowing what's right and what's wrong. There are no gray areas in between. It's either right or it's wrong. There's no in between, between right and wrong. And know that. Yes. And who's on the Lord's side? Yes. I said, who's on the Lord's side? Yes, yes. me. Yes. Everywhere I go, I say, Jesus, I'm not ashamed of him. When I worked at, and I was telling Alicia back, and we see, we, I love our relationship. Amen. We've been talking prophet stuff. Amen. Talk kingdom stuff. Yes. You know, we, we talk the kingdom. And I was telling her, I said, you know, when I work at the dealer, and I was selling their cars and making money. <laughs> and I got to thinking. I said, well, if I can sell their cars, I can sell my books. Right, right. <laughs> That's right. So I knew the gift that I had, and I began to use my gift to work for me. And yes. That's what I want you to do. Use your gift to become successful. Amen. Use your gift that it will work for you and your entire generation. Yes. And your entire family. When you get something in place, it's not about you. It's about your children behind you. Yes. I'm trying to leave something for my children behind me. Yes. That they will always have a job. That they will always have. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to leave legacy. Somebody say legacy. Legacies. And that comes with knowing what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Amen. Amen.